All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another comparison type of video. I'm going to call this one Who Did It Better? Walking Dead TV series versus comic book series arc by arc. Alright, so I decided we'd go ahead and do this one. Spoiler warning if you guys aren't caught up to the end of The Walking Dead Season 6 for TV series. And possible spoilers for the comic book series if you're not up to, let's see, uh, trade volume... Um, something to fear, 17. So, yeah, so heads up for both. Um, so I wanted to do this one kind of to give my thoughts because sometimes it's fun to compare the Walking Dead TV series to the comic book series, but I've never done one where I compare the actual individual story arcs and which version I think uh, did it better, which version I prefer. Because uh, it, it varies depending. It varies depending on the TV series and the comic book series, depending on which arc you mean. So, um... We'll go season by season for the TV series. We'll compare to the comics, and I'll give my thoughts on which which version I like better from each. You guys can write your uh, comments below on which ones you prefer as we break this down. So season one, you've got season one of the Walking Dead television series versus uh, volume one, uh, Days Gone By, which also... It kind of includes, uh, you know, volume two, but but not entirely. Uh, that's this stuff is mostly uh, actually it's pushed into actually kind of like a few different seasons really. Um, so in this one, days gone by. So in this trade, this would be the equivalent of the first season. This is the first six issues. We see uh, Carl kill off Shane at the end of this trade. Um, so uh, to save his father, to save uh, Rick. In the TV series version, of course. That one spills into season two. So which arc do I like better? Do I like kind of the, I, I like to think of this as sort of like the survival arc in The Walking Dead, which is prior to the prison, prior to the time they get to the prison, um, where they're just kind of going around and they're just trying to survive. You know, they're just trying to kind of uh, make it in the comic book series. Same as this one before you get to volume three, which is Safety Behind Bars which actually is like season three uh, of the, uh, the Walking Dead. So both of these two are kind of what you would use to compare. Um, for this one, in the TV series, we have some add-ins. We have the CDC at the end of season one, which gets the final two episodes, and we get a lot more stuff with Shane. Shane's story arc is extended quite a bit into the second season. Instead of him being killed off in the end of the first season, they went with the CDC instead, stretched that into the second season, gave us a little bit more with regards to that, and of course they kind of catch up, so to speak, at the end of season two. Also in season two, we have what lies ahead, where you have kind of the, the small herd by today's standards come through on the highway, they get down under the cars, they hide, and technically that's add-in if you want to look at it that way. That is I don't want to call it filler because I don't think that word describes it because it's really good, <laughs> right? Uh, but it is add-in as well as you have Merle added into the first season as well um, with him on the on the roof and everything. So And Daryl as well too, which all doesn't happen in the comic book series. So for me, for the first two seasons of The Walking Dead... Um, for me, it's pretty much a landslide. I like the TV series version better. I like how they give Shane some more time and he sticks around rather than being killed off right at the beginning. And uh, I like the add-ins with Merle. I like the add-ins with the additional the additional Shane stuff, like uh, 18 Miles Out and stuff like that, which is totally new. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff that's added in the second season. What Lies Ahead, I think, is still one of the best episodes. I mean, as a premiere, that was an incredible premiere when it first hit, one of the most exciting episodes ever on first viewing and that was the first kind of like huge herd that we'd ever seen um so definitely for me the first season and the second season i'm going to go with the tv series version as as doing it better i want to say i think they took what was done originally in the comic book series they added to it they expanded on it they improved it and they made it even better i want to say even though there are a few slow parts in season two now here's where things get a little tricky is with season three so that's the first two seasons so i'm saying i prefer the uh, tv series season three is where it gets a little tricky because season three is great it has a lot of action it's really crazy and it's really fast paced and they go through a ton of stuff from the comic book series the thing about it is, they skip a lot of stuff, they leave it out, and then it feels like to me, in order to fix it, Gimple has to come in with season four, and he has to kind of redo the governor. So he has to take the governor from season three, where like his story arc pretty much felt like it should have ended, but that would have been too fast to convert to all of these trades into one season like that. And they have to bring the governor back, give him a new group, to uh, not Woodbury, you give him a, an additional new group to kind of take over 
so that you can have the events where he attacks the uh, the prison and kind of with the tank and everything, and it turns out to be pretty amazing. So even though I love Too Far Gone in that, and I love you know how, how amazing that episode is, and, and I really love season three as well as well too. Uh, I can't say that it was better organized or it was better done than in the comic book series. In the comic book series, it feels a lot more flush with the governor. In in the TV series, it's really weird after season three where the governor like becomes a team killer. He kills everybody from Woodbury, pretty much. Uh, Rick's group kind of takes over Woodbury and brings him to the um, brings him to the prison. And then in season four. Everybody who they bring, pretty much, <laughs> with the exception of a few, are pretty much all killed off. You've got the flu thing that goes on. It's almost like he had to come in and fix it because season three was just so messed up at the end. Uh, they kill off Merle, and then uh, totally unnecessarily they kill off Andrea. Um, and there's a lot of parts from the co- from the prison uh, story arc in the comics that didn't make it into season three, like the Rick uh, Tyrese fight. So they kind of haphazardly throw it into the uh, the uh, fourth season like this one don't say that where uh, Tyrese uh, gives him a good uh, gives him a good punch uh, and some stuff with Carol was used to kind of to kind of finish up a few of these things but it just felt a lot different in the um, in the TV series version because they made the governor kind of his story arc sort of ends but then it like comes back again and like it's just it just feels a bit messy to me the way they did it and I definitely think that the comic book series was kind of a better cleaner build up with with some good kind of story in the middle and that um, I can't help but think that when they when they converted it to the TV series season 3 was so fast paced that they skipped over a lot of stuff they really shouldn't have and um You know, we ended up getting too far gone. It was still incredible to see, but I do have to say for this one that I do prefer the comic book series for the season three stuff and first half of season four stuff, uh, which is kind of like the the governor prison uh, story arc, so to speak. So then after that, we get to Here We Remain. So this this part is like post-prison up until the point where they find a place to, to live after all the governor stuff goes down. They lose the prison. They lose everything. This is the equivalent of after where you see Carl and he's eating the uh, the pudding and everything like that. And uh, you have, um, you know, quite a, quite a few different things that happen. It's hard for me to sum it up just in, you know, a minute or two. But you go through the TV series version. You have Joe with the Claimers, uh, which I actually did like better than their comic book series uh, counterpart, uh, which kind of popped up out of nowhere. Joe and the Claimers, I think, were actually an improvement uh, over. And then we have, like, What We Become here where Rick bites the other uh, guy. Also in the TV series version, we had Daryl with him at that time where he calls him his brother, that kind of stuff, and they fight alongside each other. And I did feel like that was a nice ad because you don't have Daryl, of course, in the comic book series. So I felt like that was uh, that was better. Um, there is some stuff left out that gets pushed into some later seasons and some stuff in this one, for example. Uh, they go on the, uh, on the road. They're, like, running down. There's, like, a whole bunch of... Uh, of zombies that they kind of uh, slam through, and that was not adapted in that part or in that in that season. I mean, it, it's it, it's kind of tricky. They kind of they switched it around quite a bit, and you have kind of uh, Daryl and the others. They go on a run. They get stuck in her. They have to abandon ship, and they have to run. So it's kind of like did they adapt it? Did they not? It's 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 quite a bit different for sure. So in terms of like the post prison story arc for the second half of season four, and leading up to uh, Fear the Hunters, which is right here. Uh, leading up to Fear the Hunters, I'm going to say that I think I do prefer the TV series version. And I did like the way they used Terminus. I mean, that's pretty hard to argue because if you see No Sanctuary, a season five, episode one, uh, leading up to and getting into the um, the Fear of the Hunters, that's one of the most epic episodes ever. I mean, that actually has more views than Too Far Gone. It has more views than the season uh, four premiere. That is a 17.29 million view episode and that is the most viewed episode of The Walking Dead ever. So if anybody's wondering, hey, do cliffhangers work? Yes, <laughs> they work. Uh, all you have to do is check the ratings for No Sanctuary after it was Terminus and they were in the trade cart. And then people had to come back to see that. So that worked out great. And I'd even say that the TV series version of The Fear of the Hunters, because of Terminus, is much improved. And it was a cool location to see. And... Um, I liked it even more than the comic book series. The only gripe I had with it is that the uh, the hunters were dead 
by ep- the end of episode three in season five. And I felt like they really could have stretched that some more. Instead of stretching out the Hunter story arc, they decided to go with the Beth story arc, which I don't have an equivalent to in the uh, the comic book series. The only thing is like a self-help, which is the Abraham episode. That has an equivalent in the comic book series, but the rest of the Beth stuff doesn't with Coda, Consume, Crossed. And they kind of took some elements like Rick running over the, uh, the other Bob, which is kind of, see, that's another big event from season three that should have been in season three, with the Woodbury, um, you know, prison story arc that never was, uh, where they used it, and I thought it was good. Um, but like I said, it, it would have been cool to see that maybe it, where it was kind of supposed to be in sort of the battle with Woodbury as well, too. Um, so I don't hate the first half of season five, but I don't think the Beth stuff in the last few episodes is one of the absolute highlights of the series. It's still good, but there's no equivalency to compare it to in the comics. So we can't really say, is it better to have it? Is it better without it? I guess it's better to have it than not to have it, you know, uh, versus nothing. But, um, yeah, I think the uh, the Hunters were actually done better with Terminus in the TV series. So going on from there, so that's midway through Season 5. Going into the second half of Season 5, we have uh, the stuff like what happened and what's going on, which... Uh, you know, the, the Tyrese death, which kind of feels just like thrown in there because they felt like they couldn't use Tyrese anymore or he was supposed to be dead by now. I don't know. It's it a big death, but it was uh, a little lackluster. I guess the purpose of it is so that we don't feel like safe around the zombies. Like the zombies are always still a threat and uh, they're never totally uh, manageable, uh, as Gail Ann Hurd has said before. So then we got the other episodes from season five. So we meet, uh, we meet uh, the Alexandriites and that. We have the distance, which has that... Uh, part with the car running down and some cool stuff there. Remember, forget, spend, try, and conquer. So the TV series version, verse, like a, this is kind of like the, the Alexandria story arc. So meeting Alexandria, getting to know the characters from Alexandria, and um, you know which is better between the comic book series and the TV series. It's pretty tough. Um, there are some things about the comic book series I like better. For example, you have... Um, Rick and Jesse in the uh, the comic book series version, they actually do sleep together. In the TV series version, they don't, at least so far as we know they don't. And they don't even really have the same kind of relationship as they did in the comic book series. In the comic book series, to me, it's pretty obvious that Jesse and Rick are in love, this kind of thing. They're, 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 have, they're sleeping together, they're doing this, and, and they're kind of staying with each other in the same house and this kind of deal. In the TV series, it's quite a bit different from that. And I wouldn't say it's better with regards to that, um, you know, element in particular. But I, I still want to say that I think the beginning of the Alexandria story arc was better in the TV series version, if nothing else, than just to get to see the community. I think it's very impressive if you look at the Alexandria community and you look at kind of the AMC. They have that app where you can go and you can kind of look around the streets and that. Uh, is, is really cool. It's a really nice big location. Uh, it kind of makes the prison look like crap, <laughs> if, uh, if you ask me. I mean, it's huge, and uh, you know they built all this stuff for it. They put in a lot of work for Alexandria and making it really look good. So the second half of season five, I'm also going to go with the uh, the TV series version for that story arc. Now we get into s- season six. We have the first time again, uh, JSS, thank you, here's not here, now, always accountable, heads up, start to finish, and then eventually no way out. So um, the first half of season six versus the comic book series version. Uh, man, this one, this one's pretty tough. JSS, the wolves, not far thing. Uh, I did like the wolves better than the scavengers in the comic book series, I'd have to say. In the comic book series, the scavengers kind of show up, led by Derek. They just kind of show up out of nowhere. They hear gunshots and they go in. Now, they remixed it a bit so that it doesn't happen uh, kind of, let's see, it, it happens sort of like in tandem with No Way Out. Like it happens in the TV series at the same time. Like in the TV series version, the wolves are part of the cause of No Way Out because they pull a lot of the zombies off of their path and they pull them towards Alexandria due to the noise, due to the uh, the truck horn and, and these types of these types of things that happen. Plus in that we get to see some awesome action sequences that really, they look good in a comic book series. Comic book series are always cool to see. But visually... When you get to see Morgan and he's using the staff and you get to see Carol and she's coming in with the, the Assassin's Creed ninja outfit and stuff and she's killing people. 
I almost want to say like like it, it's pretty tough to beat that. Also, you get kind of the fake death with uh, with Glenn, and you get the first time again. So you get a huge mega you know mega herd so to speak, which is bigger than I want to say anything we've seen in the comic book series. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculously huge, which is cool to see. You have Daryl, he's trying to bring him away, and you have all this kind of craziness happening, and then eventually you have No Way Out in Episode Nine after start to finish, in which case you have like you know the death of Douglas or the death of Deanna, and a lot of these events are exactly the same between the comic book series and the TV series. So all in all, I have to say, even though there's certain things about the comic book series I like better, like you get to see Rick and, and Jesse together, and there's some other stuff there, I do think the TV series uh, really took it and did improve it. You know, they added to the number of zombies in No Way Out. They made it even kind of crazier and bigger. They made it even more exciting. Um, the way that No Way Out was edited, for example, by, uh, you know, well, Greg Nicotero directed it, but the editing where you get to see all the kind of... Uh, slashing and killing down of the zombies as it goes through. It was like a montage and everything. It was pretty impressive. And then they also added in some of the uh, Negan elements, too, to get that started with Daryl and the others. So for the first half of Season 6, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, too, I do think it was also superior in the TV series than it was in the comic book series. I think it did add to it. It did improve on it. And it has been even better. And even with that, you got Always Accountable, where we get to see Dwight earlier. He doesn't just show up out of nowhere like in the, uh, the comic book series. He kind of shows up. Yeah, he shows up totally out of nowhere by killing somebody. In the TV series version, you know, we get, at least we know who he is prior. Daryl runs into him. And then, you know, we don't know what happens after that. But then we see him kind of come back, and he's got that burnt face and everything, uh, iron face and all that, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And then that also leads us to the second half of Season 6 after No Way Out. A lot of these episodes are very similar with uh, Knots Untie. You've got the next world meeting Jesus, which is kind of silly fun. And uh, then we go through up to current time with the uh, with the appearance of Negan. So up until the finale with East and all the other stuff with Daryl and Dwight kind of going back and forth and the other stuff with the same boat with Carol and Maggie, I am going to say I prefer the TV series. But when it comes to the finale for Last Day on Earth, I mean, uh, I definitely prefer the comic book series version of Issue 100 and Something to Fear. I mean, I think that uh, the comic book series version, getting to see it all flush through so we don't have to wait all summer... Um, <laughs> You know, is is pretty nice. I mean, cliffhangers, they work. No Way Out was the biggest episode they ever had. Or, sorry, No Sanctuary was the biggest episode they ever had in terms of uh, views because of the cliffhanger. So they work. But, um, you know, it's nice to see Negan come in and bash that head in the same in, in the same issue, and everybody lose you know jaws just hit the floor. So issue one, oh my god, yeah, so amazing. So that brings us up to current date. Which which did it better? Which story arc do, do I like better? You know, it, it's hit or miss here and there. Uh, you guys can write your comments below on which one you like better. Season one and two, I'm going to go with a TV series. Season three and first half of four, I'm going to go with comic book series just because it's better organized. Second half of four, TV series. Uh, season five, mostly TV series, and season six. Mostly TV series, with the exception of uh, current, uh, with uh, you know having to wait for uh, the Negan kill, which it has been a, it's been a painful wait over the summer. I'll be honest with you. So, uh, which did it better? There's kind of a more in depth uh, you know look at uh, which version of the story I like better. Overall, I'd, I would say it's a TV series. I think they've added enough for me as a viewer, and they've they've upped the scale enough to make the TV series my favorite version of The Walking Dead. And I actually find as we go through. I reread the old Walking Dead comics less and less as the TV series has been releasing. And I, I, I watch the older episodes more of the TV series than I do uh, the Walking Dead comics. But that's me. I know some of you guys are different. So, um, yeah, that'll be it for today's video, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, we'll get back to Fear Walking Dead uh, tomorrow as usual. And uh, if you guys did like it, guys, you know. You know what to do. Thumb that shit up. You're playing a game. I bet you you're playing a video game. Alt-tab, dude, and give me a thumbs up. I know it. Uh, you got caught. No. <laughs> Sometimes I say that. People comment. They're like, how did you know, Trev? Uh, I just do, man. I just do. It's, it's just what it is. So thumb it up. Share, favorite. And if you guys are new and you want to subscribe, you can subscribe at the bottom left. That's it for this video today. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, it's Trev. And I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See ya.